What is up, YouTube? Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys the update to my add-on guide for the Merkmeyer patch of the Elder Scrolls Online. I like to make this video every single time I make any changes to my add-ons, whether or not it's just adding a couple add-ons or removing some. I get asked about my add-ons all the time on my videos and my streams. So this is one of those guides that I really, really like to keep updated at all times, especially, like I said, when I do make any large changes. And I recently have, being that I have started tanking, I've definitely made some big changes to my user interface. I've downloaded some new add-ons mainly. I haven't really removed much, um, but I've just downloaded some new stuff to assist in my tanking journeys. And these are all the add-ons that I'm currently using at this time. Uh, I feel like the setups that I have are pretty good. Uh, performance is very, very, is very nice. And uh, yeah, overall, I've been really, really enjoying this add-on setup. So hopefully you guys like it as well. I will be going over not only my add-on settings, but just my base game settings. Again, I get asked about them constantly. And uh, I'll just be going over the add-ons as a list first, what they do and what they are. And then I'll be going over the customization. Now, pay attention during the customization section because I get tons of questions about things that I put in the guides in the past. People still ask me questions in the comments. So pay attention, especially if there's an add-on you're asking questions about. Odds are I have answered it. So let's just go into the add-on list real quick, what add-ons I have and what they do. So the first thing we have is action duration reminder. Still my favorite bar add-on. Still works really, really well. Nice lightweight add-on. As you can see, when I use leeching strikes, it puts a number and a countdown on how long is left on leeching strikes. And if I switch bars, boom, I can still see it on my back bar. You know, even though the skill is on the front bar, I can still see how long is left. It's an amazing add-on for keeping track of your own cooldowns. We also have the add-on selector, which allows me to make different add-on packs, which is an amazing add-on, especially if you like to play in different game modes, and if you enable and disable add-ons a lot, this makes it so that you can do it at the touch of a button. When I go over my um, the settings later, I will go over what my packs are specifically. I also use Advanced Member Tooltip. Advanced Member Tooltip helps show me in the guild how long someone has been in the guild for, as well as how much money they've donated and withdrawn. I personally use that to help with some of my guild ranks. We also used Assist Rapid Riding, so whenever I hop on my mount, it puts rapids on my bars, and whenever I use use it it takes it off or whenever i dismount it takes it off just makes it really easily for uh makes it really easy for traveling we also use awesome guild store which greatly improves the functionality of the eso guild store which in my opinion is extremely limited so whenever you go into the guild store you get all of these nice options and whenever you have master merchant enabled if you do run master merchant as well you will have a thing down here where you can check deals and uh, it's a really good way to help flip items and whatnot as a way to make gold. I have a guide for that on my channel if you're interested. Uh, but it just greatly improves the functionality and sorting of the guild store. It's a little buggy, though, when you go through some of the pages. But unfortunately, right now, it is kind of like all we have. And it is the best solution to the current functionality of the guild store. We also have Can I Horn, which is an add-on that I've recently downloaded to help me track Warhorn. As you can see on the top left, it says Warhorn is not active when Warhorn is not active on myself or any of my party members around me and if it's green that means warhorn is not active so i can horn and if it's red that means warhorn is active so that means do not use warhorn so i just use that to help me rotate my warhorns with my healers or the off tank and it just makes that a lot easier i also use champion point respec i have a bunch of different champion point customizations that i use i have one for solo pve one for my tanky trolley pvp one for dungeon tanking where i kind of choose to focus on damage a tiny bit more and then one for my stereotypical tanking slash trial tanking where i'm obviously just focused on pure uh you know less offense and more defense and healing so i use that for my champion points make selecting uh switching between various preset champion points much easier we also have combat metrics uh is what shows that thing at the top left of my screen that's like kind of like the damage meter so you can see the dps per second of yourself in the group and what percentage you've done same thing with the healing and you could also bring up a screen here which shows you all these wonderful features and options um about your damage and about a parse if you do one so it is just a really really helpful add-on everybody pretty much uses this as like the gold standard uh add-on 
for tracking parses and whatnot. So it's a really, really good one. Uh, Dark UI is what gives my uh, add-ons, or excuse me, my user interface, the appearance that it has and is the main add-on that I have. It basically gives ESO in night mode. I literally don't even remember what the base game looks like without this enabled. I, I Ever since I've installed this add-on, I've never taken it off. It's amazing. It just makes the whole uh, user interface look significantly cleaner. We have Dolgobin's Lazy Rit Creator, which allows you to collect writs and do them extremely quickly i'll even demonstrate to you how they work so if you walk up to the rip board here it pulls them all off immediately then you can just simply run in here you go to a crafting table it appears as red because you've not done the rift yet you click it and it says crafting will use 39 ancestor silk i have 517 available you have enough mats so I literally just click craft and it goes through and crafts the writs that simple, okay? And then if you want to go and turn in, oh, and if you, in case you didn't see, the name turned green because your writ is done. Now, if you go and turn the writ in, literally, I'm not even kidding, I didn't even do my writs before I got this hat on. It really makes, it makes it so much easier. You walk up to here, examine, boom, and it literally automatically turns it in and opens up the containers that you get. So, you, uh, I got... This, uh, the Ruby to Leather Jack, that's ornate that I can sell, a grand repair kit, which I can uh, use to repair my gear, and then I got some other materials. So as you can see, it makes doing writs incredibly fast and incredibly easy, and I absolutely recommend it so much. It's been, it's been a lifesaver of an add-on, and I can't possibly recommend it enough. Uh, we also have Dressing Room. Dressing Room, man, I literally don't know if I can play this game without Dressing Room. Dressing Room allows me to switch between pre-setup gear sets and skill setups with the click of a button. Between this and Champion Point Respec, I can switch up my builds extremely quickly. As long as you have the gear in your bags and the, sk uh, the skills that you want for your specific setups, obviously you have your skill points in them, you will be able to switch between saved uh, dress, like um, outfit slash ability profiles with the click of a button. It is an amazing add-on and I love it very very much besides dressing room we also have map pins map pins is what I've used to basically replace the suite of lore books sky shards and destinations because it basically does all of what those add-ons do but in one add-on so as you can see over here if you go to the filters you can see what you want to see in your map, points of interest, way shrines, group members, sky shards, lore books, points of interest, time rifts, etc. Really really awesome add-on uh, I, I can't say enough good things about it. I think, again, something like this should be in the base game. But for now, we have to use an add-on for it. And I like map pins because it does everything that those old three add-ons did, but in one singular add-on. So I can't recommend it enough. I also run Master Merchant. I have it currently disabled at the moment because Master Merchant is a hog on your computer's resources. I have an amazing PC. And even when I have Master Merchant enabled, it still doesn't run very well. Uh, it, it's just, it's a hog of an add-on. But basically what it does is it gets all of the information, the selling and purchasing information from your various guild traders of the guilds that you're in. And it basically comes up with an average price and shows like a graph on the tooltip of your item for a specific item. So like I would be able to see the price of my Blade of the Warrior Poet or the chest plate of uh, my Warrior Poet. I'd be able to see in a graph underneath it how much people have purchased it for, what I should be selling it for, or what I should be purchasing it for. Um, it also combines very well with Awesome Guild Store and makes it really easy to purchase and sell things. It's just, it's a great add-on for... Um, telling you what you should be paying for items and what you should be selling items for. And I only really use it if I am buying and selling things. Otherwise, I keep it disabled at all times. That's why I have a specific add-on profile for it. Uh, it literally just enables Master Merchant, but without it, it turns it off. Uh, definitely recommend the add-on. It's a great add-on, even though it is a hog on your resources. It is an amazingly powerful add-on. And a lot of the people I know who are super into just they log in and make gold all day. They use this. It's incredibly powerful. I don't even think I've scratched the surface of what I can do with this, but I use it simply for buying and I, you know, all the selling that I do do. Uh, but great add on. Definitely recommend it. We have raid buffs. Uh, raid buffs is a very cool add on that I downloaded recently. Again, it's part of my whole tanking uh, setup recently that I've been running. And I can't show you it here because I'm not in a in an instance, but what happens is if let's say I'm going up to a boss, let's say 
uh, this dude standing on this rock who sings all the time. Let's say he's a boss, right? And I come up to him. A little box will appear on your screen. I think I have mine over here. A little box will appear on your screen that shows you things like an engulfing flame, uh, like engulfing flame uptime on the target, crusher uptime on the target, as well as Alkosh uptime on the target. And you can kind of adjust what it shows you in the menus, but it, it helps you track uptimes of very important tanking buffs slash debuffs on your target. And it is an amazingly helpful add-on. And I definitely recommend it for tanking. Uh, we also have Raid Notifier. Raid Notifier is an incredibly important add-on for anybody who does trials. It shows you very important information about the trial that you're doing. So, for example, right if we open up Mavlor Kaj, you know, I can see in these fights, you can basically turn them on. You know, if I want to see the full, all the full alerts, you know, normal amount of alerts, minimal alerts are off. It basically shows you alerts about that fight. Like, hey, this next phase is about to occur. Get ready to switch. Or, hey, he's about to do this thing. Get ready to block. Like, it just notifies you of raid mechanics that are about to occur. And a lot of really serious trial teams do require it. And even not so serious trial teams use it as well just because it m helps you and your group minimize the number of mistakes that you can make. It's really, really helpful add-on. Definitely recommend it. I also have Untaunted, another uh, add-on that I've recently downloaded for tanking that basically will show in a lot, like in kind of like with green bars going down, I have it over here. It will show my taunt uptime on various targets. So the more targets I have, the list will continually grow. But it helps me show my taunt uptime on a target. So if I taunt somebody with Pierce Armor, they'll be taunted for 15 seconds. And a countdown timer of the name of the thing that I taunted will start going and obviously it will change colors the lower it gets to notify you to be like hey you're probably retaunt that guy uh very helpful add-on very very helpful for tanking makes you makes it super easy to keep my taunt up times as good as they could be we also have votan's keybinder uh, I have played a lot of characters in the past, and I like to just carry my gee binds across all the characters without having to manually do it each time. Again, this is something I believe should be in the base game. They should have an option that says enable account-wide key binds or something like that. It is annoying to me to have to do it each character, but Votan's key binder allows you to maintain key binds across a suite of characters. Very helpful. And then finally, we have Votan's minimap, which is the minimap that you see on the right side of my screen. Uh, very, very low impact on my computer's resources, and it is an incredibly helpful add-on, you know, just to have a minimap in-game. Very, very nice. Now, I have a crap ton of libraries. Harbin's add-on settings, lib add-on menu, lib async, lib custom menu, lib dialog, lib stub, and Votan's add-on list. And I get asked about these constantly. Well, when I say constantly, I mean I get asked about these mainly on my last video because that's when a lot of the add-ons that I do use uh, started to use these libraries, use more and more libraries, and now obviously those libraries are here to stay. What I recommend doing if you, when you download a lot of these add-ons, right, it will download the libraries with it. Okay, it will download the libraries with it, but if it doesn't, you can download these libraries manually from Minion. Minion will have them if you search. Like I think Lib Async was I think one I had to like manually download, or I think I think Lib Stub as well, or maybe it was Lib Dialog. I don't even know, but I just searched in Minion. I searched Lib Async. I saw it and I downloaded it because I think one of my add-ons was like, oh, I require I require this to work. It may have been Votons. I think Votons was complaining that it didn't, you know, Votons Menu Map was complaining, oh, I don't have this library. So I had, you know, I opened it, I expanded it, it said you're missing, you know, this library. So I just downloaded it and all my add-ons work just fine. So again, these are the add-ons. If you run my add-on setup, these are the libraries you're gonna need. Most of the, I believe most of them will be downloaded when you download the other add-ons, but for the ones that are missing, you know, look at this list. For the ones that are missing, just simply go to Minion, and you will be able to download them. So that is the current, the list of add-ons I have and what they do. I'm going to kind of, because this video is actually already getting pretty long, I didn't realize it was 13 minutes long already, I'm going to try to breeze through my settings. They're not overly complicated. It's a lot of the same crap from other ones, and again, a lot of these add-ons are pretty much just plug-and-play. So we're going to start with my default uh, my default settings. Now, video and audio, whatever you need. Gameplay. I have combat cues on, custom colors on. People always ask, how did you get your enemy color to be bright pink? This is how. Custom colors on. I have my friendly targets are bright green. 
Enemy targets are bright pink. I find it much easier to see. Ground targeting, ra uh, range lock on, prevent attacking innocence on. Quick cast ground abilities is automatic. Uh, if you want to be able to uh, cast ground abilities without having to manually like click the skill, you would want to turn this to on. Uh, I also have consolidate area loot on, auto loot on, auto let the craft back on, loot history on. Uh, and that's like the main thing. Camera is pretty much just default. Interface, I have prefer user ID on, quest tracker on, on, all this crap is just basically on. I don't have quest bubbles on. And then people always ask again, how do I get this thing in the bottom left here? It's right here. Interface performance, frame rate, latency, and then lock the position of that on. Name plates. Name plates, extremely helpful. It's how you can see the health bars of, of uh, people when you're running about. So I turn this on, just leave it as the default. I just clicked on, boom, default. Health bars, on, boom, default, left that on. Indicators, I uh, left alliance indicators as enemy, group members on, resurrect players on, 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 just all that on. Uh, social, again, you're going to kind of want to adjust this to your liking, but I turned off the leaderboard notifications. I found it incredibly annoying. Uh, AVA announces automatic, profanity filter is off. I changed the colors of the guilds as I wanted to. Combat. To get your ability bar to always show, you need to change ability bar to always show. To get your attribute bars to always show, um, should be always show. I don't know actually what add-on is keeping those on all the time. I don't even remember. Well, you would want to put this on always show. I'm actually surprised it's still up. You would want to keep that on always show. If you wanted to always show the attribute bars, you would want to do always show. Uh, or you could just leave it on automatic. But I, I, I actually don't know why they're not dimming. I, I really don't. I think if automatic, if it was automatic, they'd disappear. But put it on always show. Resource numbers, I have number and percent. Active combat tips, always show. Ultimate number on. Combat text, I clicked on and left it on. Uh, buffs and debuffs. I only use the target debuffs. The self buffs, self debuffs, all that stuff. Long effects, permanent effects. All that stuff's pretty much taken care of by action duration reminder that I, the ones that I care about, I don't care about my long effects or permanent effects. Uh, self debuffs, I again, don't really care about. Um, so I, I only use the target debuffs, but for like my own buffs, again, I use action duration reminder. And now in terms of my add-on settings, for action duration reminder, I have account-wide configuration on, multiple target tracking on, seconds to keep timers after timeout, I have five, seconds of ignorable short timers is three, shift bar enable on. So the shift bar enable is what basically is that thing that pops up when I switch bars, like this area right here, this is the shift bar. Now by default, this is right up against your ability bar. So every time you bar swap, it will bump your health bar up and down. And I found that wildly annoying. I hated it. So basically I clicked move to shift bar and basically just dragged that above my health bar and then boom, clicked the move shift bar again and it locked it in place. Label font size, I was bold. I'm pretty sure the rest of this I just kind of left as default. Um, yeah, I didn't really change anything else. Assist rapid writing. I just changed the ability slot to five. Everything else I pretty much left as default. Awesome guild store. Uh, I think... I think I left everything as default. I have skip guild kiosk dialogue off. I know that was on by default um, because it allows you to just go right into talking to a guild trader. But because I am a guild leader and I do bid on guild traders, I have this turned off so I can actually click the option to bid on the guild, tra the guild traders. But otherwise, I just have cancel notifications, purchase notifications, mail augmentation, traded tool tips, tool tips and search library, single click item listing. Remember sort order, show per unit price and search results, minimize chat on open, and keep purchase on items and result list all on. Can I horn? Installed it, didn't touch it, left it as it was, dragged it to the top left. Champion point respec on on. Combat metrics, I changed this down to a fight history of 5, save fight memory of 10, use account wide settings on, monitor group damage on, damage in large groups on, show stacks of buffs on, light mode off, turn off and Cyrodiil on, light mode and Cyrodiil on, uh, auto select channel on, uh, scale of fight report window is 100, and then the rest of this I pretty much just left. Ah, for, for this down here, the live report window, I enabled that, I uh, dragged it to the top left, clicked to lock. Then I show DPS, HPS, incoming DPS, incoming HPS, and show time. And everything else is just off. Dark UI is on dark. Everything else is the same. Quick slot radial menu uh, color is blue. Dressing room, I have as four rows and two columns. Change this to whatever you want. Otherwise, I left it all default. Oh, I think I turned off unequip empty gear slots. 
I am pretty sure I want that on. Clear empty skill slots. I think I want that on as well. I think I had those on on a different character, but not on this guy. So I'd recommend turning them on. Everything else I left the way it was. Lazy Rick Creator, the first time you go to a crafting table, it's going to ask what kind of options you want to use. I just use the default stuff. Lib Group Socket, no idea what this is. I have no idea where it came from. No idea what add-on is a part of, but I it's, it's here. And it's off, on, on, on. Don't know what this does, but it's there. Raid Notifier, you are pretty much going to change and edit as your specific raid needs. Raid buffs left it pretty much default. Um, as you can see, clicking this does nothing. So I just left it the way it was. I think I changed this tracking preset to tank. I think that's all I did. And besides that, the rest of it is default. On taunted, I moved over here. Um, and I think I kind of messed with the, the width and the height a little bit. Again, you can adjust that as you like. I have only player effects on and track taunt on everything else is off this thing can give you a lot of information and i don't want it to like crush me with the amount of info that it gives um in terms of my add-on pack the way i do it is when i play in pve i have everything enabled except for master merchant when i use master merchant i just enable master merchant and when i play in cyrodiil or in bgs i only use votons minimap dressing room dark ui Champion point respec, assist rapid writing, add on selector, and action duration reminder. Everything else is turned off. And then, in terms of the libraries that you need, you're going to need Harvin's add on settings, lib async, lib dialog, and lib stub. The rest of them can be turned off. So, that is what I use for PvP. And then, like I said, boom, that's my PvE profile. And then I have auto reload UI and pack selection. You're going to want to turn that off, or it's going to be incredibly clunky to manage this. Um, and then I just have allow add ons of other client versions checked. I, that was checked by default. And this checkbox is enabled. You are allowed to use add-ons, which were tested using another API version. Oh, I think this is allow out-of-date add-ons. I think that's a fancy, co a fancy code to say allow out-of-date add-ons. So click that on. People always go, dots, my add-ons are out-of-date. I can't use them. Click that box. You'll be able to use them. But no, that's really funny that my, my uh, HP and Magicka bar and stamina bars are showing all the time because they none of my add-ons really affect that anymore. Maybe it's kind of like a locked-in setting from an old add-on I had, but again, to get your ability attribute bars to sh always show, you're gonna want to do attribute bars always show. You'll be set to go. But that is pretty much it for my add-ons, boys and girls. That is what Dot Gaming is currently using for his add-ons. I've pretty much kept my add-ons uh, consistent over the last couple of patches. You guys are going to notice this really isn't a whole lot of changes. The only changes is that I really I installed add-ons this time. I installed Can I Horn uh, on Taunted and Raid Buffs. I don't know if I uninstall if I uninstalled anything. Um, maybe I did, but. Uh, I don't remember it, so clearly it wasn't overly important. But this is really the add the add on setup and the UI setup that I've been running for a while. Uh, so I definitely recommend it. It's a really really good setup. Uh, oh, I just forgot Votons mini map because I'm gonna get a thousand questions about Votons mini map. Okay, on on all default. I basically resized it with my mouse. Show while HUD on. Show while looting on. Show while mounted on. Combat on. Siege on. Uh, Zoom world player off. Okay. I get asked about this every single time I make my add-on guide. If you want to move Votons minimap, turn off lock position and size, use your mouse, drag it around, resize it to your heart's content, and then turn this back on and you'll be good to go. Show clock off, keep square on, allow floor navigation on, top, whatever color this is, medium, keyboard bold, ESO style, 100%. 12 hours, uh, even though it doesn't matter because the clock's off, mini-map hidden, zone change alert, show and hide compass, untouched, show freeze warning off. So that is Votons. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying. This is pretty much the add-on setup that I've been running for the last couple patches. I haven't really changed very much. Uh, this has been running really, really well on, you know, between this PC and my old PC. This setup ran really well. I feel it's very efficient to, to do everything I need to do in-game. Um, doesn't absolutely hog all the memory on my computer because I like my computer and my PC to run as smoothly as possible, especially when I do stream, which does take up resources of its own and ESO being a CPU heavy game and add-ons just, you know, running the way they do in ESO. Um, I want it, everything to run as smoothly as 
possible. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this add-on guide today and that you like my user interface. And if you do, and if you like the add-ons I'm running, I'd appreciate if you slapped a like on the video. But for any questions about my UI, why I'm running, what I'm running, anything, feel free to leave a comment below. And for more great Elder Scrolls Online and general gaming content, please hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep notifications on. And be sure to go follow me over on twitch.tv slash dots gaming for your live stream needs. But I want to thank you all so much for stopping by my video today. I appreciate it very, very much. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you in the next one.